Today we're going to evaluate a sum that was suggested by the channel's favorite problem suggester. And what I like about this sum is, well, you'll see there's a trick towards the middle end of our evaluation of this sum that I think is really cool. It's really a unique trick that I've never uh, seen before. Okay, so let's look at what we've got. We're going to evaluate the sum as n goes from one to infinity of one plus two times negative one to the n, and then that whole thing is multiplied into the floor of the log base two of n, and then we're dividing that whole thing by n squared. Okay, so let's dive right in. The first thing that I'm gonna do is break this into even and odd parts. So let's do that. So here, we're gonna break this into maybe the even parts first and then the odd parts second. So this is gonna be the sum as k goes from one to infinity. And since this is the even parts, that means I'm just gonna replace all of the ends with two times k. So there will be some simplification here, but I'm not gonna write out the simplification until we get to it, just so that we can see all the structure. So there we've got one plus two times minus one to the two K. And then here we have the log base two of two K. And then this is gonna be all over two K quantity squared. So we've got something that looks like that. Okay, nice. And then, well, there's a lot going on here. So I'm gonna take this down like one level to write the odd parts. So now this is gonna down here be the sum as k goes from one to infinity. And since this is the odd portion of the sum, I'm gonna replace all of the ends with two times k minus one. So here we have one plus two times minus one to the two k minus one. And then here we have the log base two of 2k minus one, well, the floor of that, all over 2k minus one quantity squared. So we're left with something like that. And then here, let's perhaps recall that all of that is within parentheses. But now I'm gonna do a couple of things. Let's first notice that this minus one to the 2k is simply a two. Uh, sorry, this minus one to the two K is simply a positive one. So that means that we have one plus two, but the one plus two is kind of obviously equal to three. So we get a three in the numerator there, but then we can take this and square both terms to give us four times K squared. So that's going to be an important step as well. And then also we can use logarithm rules on this to rewrite this as the floor of the log base two of two plus the log base two of k. But now, kind of obviously, the log base two of two is equal to one, but if you're adding one to something in the floor, well, that's the same thing as adding one to the thing outside of the floor. In other words, you can like pull the plus one out of a floor function. So that's gonna give us one plus and then we have the floor of the log base two of k. Okay, then I guess there's one more thing that we can do, and that is take this one plus two times minus one to really an odd number, and notice that this is just one minus two, so this turns into negative one. Okay, so let's see what that leaves us with when all is said and done. So we have three quarters, so that's from a three here and a four here, and now we have the sum as k goes from one up to infinity of, let's see, we're gonna have one plus the floor of the log base two of k all over k squared. So check it out, we got this one plus the floor of log base two of k from this simplification that we did right there. And then from that, we're gonna subtract the sum as k goes from one to infinity of the floor of the log base two of two times k minus one, and then this is all over two times k minus one quantity squared. So that's just a simplification of what we have so far. But now what I'm gonna do is break this into three sums. So let's see, this is gonna be three quarters, and then we'll have the sum as k goes from one to infinity of one over k squared. So that's from this one over k squared. And then we'll have plus three quarters. 
and then the sum as k goes from one up to infinity of the floor of the log base two of k all over k squared. That's from this, well, the rest of that part. And then now we're gonna subtract the sum as k goes from one to infinity of the floor of the log base two of two times k minus one all over two times k minus one squared. So now what I'd like to observe is that these two pieces are almost forming a whole, if you will. We've got the log base two of all numbers here, the log base two of odd numbers here. And let's observe that we took the log base two of all numbers and split off odd numbers and even numbers. And so perhaps that motivates us to do this step again. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna split it into two pieces. I'm gonna split it into the case when k is equal to two times m, and then the case when k is equal to two times m minus one, into even and odd parts again. But then I'll take this last term and then this first term, and they're just gonna come along for the ride. Okay, so let's see what this looks like now. So we're gonna have three quarters. I'm just bringing some stuff over at the moment. So this sum as k goes from one to infinity, we've got the reciprocal of the squares. And you might say, well, hey, I know what that sum is. That's the well-known Basel problem, but we're gonna use that fact to evaluate this thing at the very, very end. We're gonna keep this sum as k goes from one to infinity of one over k squared kind of around for as long as possible. Okay, so now let's see how this splits into pieces. So we're gonna have three quarters, and then the sum as k goes from, or sorry, now we're doing m goes from one to infinity of the log base two of two times m over two times m squared, but I'm gonna write that as four m squared. That's because the two squares, just like it did right here. And then we're gonna have plus three quarters, and then the sum as m goes from one to infinity of the log base two of two times m minus one all over two times m minus one. And then of course we've got this term as well. But I'd like to observe that this term that we have not brought in over yet is exactly the same as this term which we got from pulling off the k equals odd parts but that means they can combine together. This has a coefficient of minus one, that has a coefficient of three quarters, so we can smush those together, giving us in the end a coefficient of minus one quarter. Okay, nice. But now I'm gonna do the same kind of trick that I did before. So first of all, I'm gonna take this four right here and pull it out, that's gonna give me a four squared. You might say, well, hey, maybe you should write that just as 16 because 16 is four squared, but we're gonna leave the structure in there just to make it a little bit more obvious. And then we're gonna use the log base two of two M and we're gonna split it into this kind of action again. So let's see what we've got. So we're gonna have three quarters, the sum as K goes from one to infinity of one over K squared plus three over four squared the sum as, I'm gonna write this as k goes from one to infinity, I'll just change the index back. And then we'll have one plus the floor of the log base two of k over k squared. So that's just doing this exact calculation again, where the role of k up here was played by m over there, and then we're switching it back to k. So nothing like super fancy is going on right there. Okay, and then now we subtract one quarter, the sum as m goes from one to infinity of the floor of the log base two of, I'm gonna write this as 2k minus one all over 2k minus one squared. I guess I should change that to a k. What I did is I just like changed my index from m to k so they all match again. But now look at what we've got. We've got this number one here, which means we could split this sum into two pieces and we're gonna be left with a one over k squared, which can be combined with this other sum that's one over k squared. 
but then we'll have one with a coefficient of three quarters, one with a coefficient of three over four squared. We can like factor them out of that. So let's see, what I mean here is we've got three quarters plus three over four squared times the sum as k goes from one up to infinity of one over k squared. So that comes from that blue underline and then this first term. And then after that, we'll have plus three over four squared times the sum as k goes from one to infinity of the floor of the log base two of k over uh, k squared. And then finally minus this one quarter and then the sum as k goes from one to infinity of the floor of the log base two of two times k minus one all over two times k minus one squared. Okay, but now we're gonna do the same kind of thing again. What we'll do is take this k and split it into two pieces. We'll split it into two times m and two times m minus one one more time. Well, actually, you might see that we're gonna keep doing this over and over and over again. But if we do it this time, we're gonna pick up another version of this sum with a new coefficient. And we're gonna pick up another version of this sum with a new coefficient as well. So here, what is this gonna look like? So I'm gonna skip a step, but what we'll end up with is three over four plus three over four squared plus three over four cubed. We're gonna pick up a three over four cubed here. That's because we'll get this two K squared gives us four times K squared. Or I guess in that case, it's gonna be M, but then we'll switch it back to K. Okay, and then this is gonna be multiplied in to the sum as K goes from one to infinity of one over K squared. And then after that, we're gonna have plus three over four cubed, and then the sum as k goes from one to infinity of the log base two of k over k squared, where that log base two of k is still in the floor function. And then we'll have minus one over four squared, the sum as k goes from one to infinity of these odd type parts. So we've got the log of two k minus one, and then two k minus one squared in the denominator. So I think things are shaping up here. Let's observe that we get this because we'll have this positive three over four squared and then the negative one quarter, but putting those two things together, we'll get this minus one over four squared. Okay, and now we're gonna continue to do this. Now, if you wanted to do this super duper carefully, I think you could prove this by induction, but I'll maybe leave that as a bit of an exercise. So I'll just put equals dot, dot, dot. And what we're gonna end up with is the following. The limit as capital N goes to infinity of three times one quarter times one over four squared all the way up to one over four to the N. So this is after doing this process capital N times. And then we'll have the sum as k goes from one to infinity of one over k squared. And then after that, we'll have plus one over four to the n, that capital N. And then inside of that, we'll have the sum as k goes from one to infinity, this is multiplied by three of this floor of the log base two of k over k squared and then minus those odd terms. So that's gonna be minus the sum as k goes from one to infinity of the floor of the log base two of two k minus one over two k minus one squared. So we're really like pushing things in kind of like on the fringes over there, but it follows this nice pattern. Okay, nice. And all of this is within the limit. That's the important part. But now you can check that this stuff right here that I'm overlining in yellow converges. In other words, it converges to a finite number. That kind of goes without saying that's built into the word converges. But since that converges, that means it's finite. But then we're taking this limit as n goes to infinity of this one over four to the n, making this whole thing tend towards zero. But then this next bit just tends towards an infinite sum. But now bringing this stuff down, we've got three quarters 
And then we've got the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of 1 over 4 to the n. So that's just from factoring a quarter out of that big sum and then taking the fact that this limit is going to turn that into an infinite series. And then we've got this sum as k goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over k squared. But now this first bit is a geometric series. We've got a standard formula for a sum of a geometric series. We have a 3 quarters out front times 1 over 1 minus quarter. It's like starting term over 1 minus common ratio. The common ratio is a quarter. But let's observe that that multiplies to 4 thirds, meaning it's going to cancel with the 3 quarters. And then this term right here is a well-known series that we spoke of before. It's pi squared over 6. So in the end, we'll get the whole thing as pi squared over 6 because, like I said, those first two terms are reciprocals of each other. And that's a good place to stop.